as I'm sitting up here too, I want to hear the answers to these questions too. These guys are knocking out of the park. I mean, not just here in Canada, but around the world. Their names are known. There are household names in ACN because of the tremendous things that they've done within the organization. Let's give them a round of applause. Yeah. Just uh, for one minute, just say a little bit about where they started before they came to AC and what it was that they were doing. So, and then we'll get into some of the questions. Okay, gentlemen, are you all set? Okay, so um, to my left here, we've got Pierre Olivier Larose, who is a regional director, and he's going to tell you a little bit about Pierre. Uh, actually, I was just a student when I started ACN five years ago, and um, at the end of the day, I was just well, dreaming for an opportunity, so really just a broke student working in a restaurant, and uh, I saw ACN uh, after a year and a half doing the business at FTC, so it totally changed my life, and I can tell you I'm really excited right now. It's been five amazing years, and I'm really looking forward to the next five. Thank awesome, you. thank you. And next we have Audrey Cartman. Do you mind telling everybody a little bit about yourself, please? Uh, hi, I started ACN three years ago. I was a student to become an engineer. And then when I saw this business, I wanted to work for me. I wanted to build my own business. So I started part full time. One year, in three months, I, I hit TC. Then after, two year, after, one year after, I hit RD. And it's totally crazy. Awesome. Okay, next we have Alex Baudry. Alex? Uh, hi, guys. Before ACN, I was uh, a full time student. I did a BA in political science. And I did what everybody who finishes a BA in political science does. I went to, to work at a chicken restaurant called Saint Tobac. <laughs> and, um, and when I saw ACN, it made total sense. It got started right away. And today we have uh, a thousand of IBOs. It's really crazy. Awesome. Okay. So I think we'll start with Pierre. Is that okay? All right. Perfect. So one thing I know about um, your age group, I have a 21 and a 19 year old. And these gentlemen up here are all under the age of 27, by the way. Okay, so I know your lives are very busy. You, you have a lot of things going on. Some of you, when you saw ACN, you were in school or you were just graduating school. You may or may not have lived at home, so your parents had expectations of you. Maybe you were in sports, maybe you're in music. You were probably trying to save for a car, your, you know, the car that you, you the, the dream car, the Honda with the muffler at the back, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then there might be <laughs> some young ladies in the picture. And, you know, I know you guys have a lot of things going on. And um, perhaps you could lose interest quickly with things because you have a lot of distractions in your life. Is that true? Yes. Okay, so having said that, what was the main motivation when you looked at ACN for getting involved in ACN? Like, what hooked you into it and what kept you there? Um, it's an easy question. Um, money. Uh, you know, the, uh, I mean, I won't lie. It's really about the, the, the opportunity, just possibly to have American dream. You know, it's. It, I mean, everybody wants a good life. Everyone uh, wants a nice car and all of it. But I, when I started, I never thought that my life would be changed this fast. You know, so really, I saw ACN uh, see the opportunity and just possibly to have an amazing lifestyle. And at the end of the day, I met I met Matt Chambers when I saw the presentation. So when you see this guy, you want his lifestyle. You know. So uh, I didn't know, just listen to him, just, just wanted his lifestyle. Uh, so, so, you know, the American dream is possible. So really, really excited about it. Awesome, so the lifestyle. Audrey, what about you? <laughs> so when I started three years ago, I was 23. So like all 23 men, uh, money, cars and everything. But mostly what I like a lot, what, what I like is helping people that I love. So my family and everything. So that was burning in to me to help people. And um, so, and what I like a lot is that ACN is possible. I was starting to become an engineer. I know that an engineer is like a, a good salary, but it's not possible to have this much money. So in ACN, it's possible. It's a question of work. Um, for me, it was really the burning desire not to be average. Whereas I see everybody, like I, I had a normal life. Whereas I was working as a, a waiter, I was going to school, and I was like any other regular kid, basically. And it was, it was my ACN, it was, it was a chance for me to actually be someone, be someone cool. <laughs> and um, so, so I started, and I, I know, I think that most people start in ACN, and it's okay not to have like a, de a, a defined dream when you start ACN, okay? You just, I would just start just to be, just to be someone. 
And it's, it's crazy because what I realized, the more I grew up in AC, is you, your dream, you, you create it, you form it yourself, you, you develop it through the AC system into the environment. So that's why the environment here was so, so powerful, because that's where my dreams developed, and that's where I was able to actually start making something for myself, and that's where you actually learn to um, understand what you want in life, basically. Excellent. Alex, you can hold on to the microphone for a minute. Or not. <laughs> All right. Um, those are amazing answers, So, um, and you gave varying answers, so that's kind of cool, actually. Um, the next question I have for you, you know, you guys, the three of you, are all very well documented now with ACN, and nobody, I mean, you have a ton of credibility with anybody you speak to, but when you started in ACN and you were just coming out of school or whatever it was that you were doing, you probably didn't have that credibility, so what did you need to do when you were approaching people about this business? Okay, um, so, so my first original answer would be to say, uh, use your upline. That, that, would be, that would be my first thought. But then I, I thought about it again, and I thought about what I, I was doing. And I wasn't using my upline. So that's where, like, not weak people, but that's like people who like, use or need their upline to do. But if you want to be a true leader in ACN, you need to step up. And it all starts in your mind. So when you want to build your credibility, I, I, me and I started acting overly confident, going to meetings and walking with your head high up. And, being, you know, walking like you, you were somebody super great. And your people will react to that, they'll, they'll feel that. And even though you sometimes you don't 100% say the right stuff, it sounds like it's the right stuff because you, have, you act that way, right? <laughs> so it's a, bit, a little bit of that, also realizing what you have. So it's, it all starts in, in your mind for me in, in terms of like creating credibility. So if, if you realize what ACN is and what, what ACN like, is today, um, anybody who's in front of you, they either have a job or they have a business. If they have the business, they're really stressed out. And if they have a job, they're even worse off. <laughs> so what's cool, what you've seen is your, the opportunity that you have is so great that if you just tell yourself that before you actually walk in a meeting, you'll, your credibility goes up and you, you can say incredible stuff. Excellent, thank you. So what I was doing before and what I'm doing still now, I think it's really important, is to share your goal, share where you're going to be in ACN. So when I was starting, I wasn't making money, but I was sharing where I wanted to go with ACN. So people were scared to not follow me, because if I was really going where, where I was saying, it would miss a lot. So I think sharing your goal, sharing sharing your, uh, your goal. Vision. So this is really important. Thank you very much. Here. Uh, you know, uh, when you're young, most of the people don't really take you seriously, and it's, it's, it's totally normal. Uh, you're young, you have a hat, you know, back, back side, pants under your knee. I mean, not a lot of people can listen to you, but uh, I feel like I just had to, 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 to build a branding for myself. So, uh, Matthew, uh, who's my mentor, actually, just told me one thing that really marked me, and he told me that if you, if, if it, it will always cost you more not to pay to dress sharp than to pay to dress sharp. So, at the end of the day, I just had to, like, sorry? That's an interesting. Yeah, I mean, you have to uh, you have to invest it, but it doesn't cost you a lot of money just to, to buy a jacket or a shirt. And I have a great example in my team. It, he's a young ETL. He's, uh, he's right now and just it is, it's his birthday today. 19 years old, Benjamin Perry. So maybe you can, uh, you can uh, say happy birthday. Happy birthday. So he's 19 years old now, but it's a great example of how to uh, be credible because he started signing up a lot of older people just by dressing sharp, building a brand of, of, of himself on Facebook, putting nice picture, you know, because most of young people on Facebook, it's part of picture and all of those things, but it's okay, I mean, but he just just building a nice brand and professional brands, dressing sharp, and at the end of the day, it will, it, this business will talk for itself because when you do a great presentation, I mean, everybody's going to fall in love with you, so. True. Thank you so much, Pierre. Thank you. Okay, you guys probably have sort of answered this question in a way, but you might want to add to it. So when you were starting ACN, your business, what were, what were some of the hurdles or obstacles you came up against, and what did you do to overcome the obstacles? Uh, at first, my biggest op op obstacle was my family and my friend, you know. Uh, everybody thought it was a scam, uh, nobody was, uh, I was, I was believing me because you know, I, I, I'm coming in my home, I just started a presentation, I'm going to my home, and I'm screaming to my dad, Dad, I'm going to be rich. So, uh, it didn't really, you know, so he asked me, okay, does it cost something to get in? I was like, yes. Do you have to find people? Yes. 
So, so it's a pyramid scheme, you know, it's, it's like everybody's is going through that and ultimately when you're young, it's, it, your dad wants to protect you. So at first my biggest obstacle was my, uh, my entourage, my family, my friends, uh, but at the end, at the end was, I feel like the biggest obstacle I had was myself. Uh, I had to, uh, to learn to become coachable, I had to learn that I had to listen to other people who were, who were having more success than I had because when you listen to, to some, some of the leaders that we have, RVP, SVP, they're there to help us and they really are, are looking for us and they want us to succeed. So we really had to just uh, to learn to be coachable. So would it be fair to say that you would put some of your mentors in front of your family instead of you trying to explain it to them? Is that the advice you would give people to overcome that obstacle that you had with your family at the beginning? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, because when, when, I mean, I'm talking to young people now, so really when you're 18, 19, 20, 25 years old, the, the most of the, the, we have, most of the thing that we have to go through is our friends and our family because uh, they're scared and they want to protect us. So I really just had to, to show them it was a, it was a serious business and, and at the end of the day, I just had to really send for one month or two months and after that, they saw the result. So when the people see the result, yeah, they understand. Audrey, would you have anything to add to what you said? My first obstacle was to be serious. I was a student, so I like to party and everything. So I need to be more like focused and no distractions. So this was my first obstacle. Obstacle, and the, the second one was um, and the second one was I was really scared to talk in front of people. So I had to like really practice a lot and do it often. So it started getting better and better and better. So that was my second one. My third one was to be coachable. Like everyone, every leader is here. I think it's always our first difficulty is to be coachable and like listen to the, our, our mentor. So, so my mentor, that was Pierre Rivarez, was always telling me go to the training, go on Saturday training. I wasn't going, and so I, I grew slowly in the business. It took me seven months to become TC, but when I listened to him, I totally explode. And I, so, listen to your mentor, really important. Great. Thank you, Alex. So some of the obstacles that I got, um, first of all, is getting rid of distractions. So a lot of people get distracted really quickly, especially young people. Um, see, it's, it's basically like momentum, when you pick up momentum in your business, you start getting a new RBO, getting customers. It's basically like when you start pushing a car, let's say the car is out of gas and you start pushing the car, and you look away to look to see look, look at a bird or something and you stop looking at the car, the car is gonna stop and you're gonna have to restart all over again. Distraction is really exactly like that, that's how they operate. They, they get through your mind and then you stop doing what you were doing and then you have to start over again. So uh, getting getting rid of distraction was really a big obstacle for me. And then uh, another one is um, looking fail seeing failures as um, po positive and opportunities to grow right, and to learn. And when I started doing presentations, most people start doing presentations and they think if they don't sign up the person, it's bad. It's not really bad, you're learning all the time. If you take it as a learning opportunity, you're gonna be able to grow through that. And me, I'm happy just to do presentations. So my goal is, is not to sign up reps, it's just to do presentations. So the more you do presentations, the more you're gonna be able to uh, look, your, look at your film users' opportunities. And the third thing that I liked also um, is really, um, I was gonna say, yeah, that's basically two things that big, the big uh, obstacles that I had. So you can hold on to the microphone because I'm just gonna take one step further. So if you could uh, look out in the audience and give the young people just one tip, just one, because you each will give your own tips, um, on how best to succeed in AC and what was that one tip that you would want to share with them? Okay, for all the young people out there, I would, I would say the two things actually. One of the first part of it is start looking long term. You know, a lot of pe young people, they, and I know I see them in my team, <laughs> they start ACN and, and they're more, more focused on the party that they're having tonight. And I'm thinking, guys, we're going to go to buy yachts in Miami in like five to 10 years if we can keep up that way. You know, you can't, you got to focus on long term, like five, 10 years, 20 years vision. And that's, that's people don't, young people, they don't never focus long term. And the second thing um, <laughs> is, is really be able, be able to be a serious, serious student of your business. See, a lot of people getting the CN, they pay $500 on their credit card, and they're not serious about their business. So, me, it was really like writing down everything that works, everything that doesn't work. I track everything, my numbers. I, I'm, I'm a freak with the ACN business because I know that's what makes me win in ACN. So, it's really being able to be a serious student. As serious as you're, if half the people here were as serious in ACN as of their word in their studies or whatever in life, they'd be like blown up in ACN. Blown up. So, just be serious, a serious student in the business. Awesome. Awesome, guys. Thank you. And my first one is 
work hard. I think you can have success if you don't work really, really hard. So this is for uh, this is the first one. And uh, the second one I think is don't be scared to make mistake. Uh, you need to make mistake to learn. So if you're not ready to present and no one's there to present for you, just present anyways. And you're gonna learn by doing mistakes. So this is really important when you start. I think doing mistakes and just get up and start over. Excellent advice. And we have here. Uh, I mean. We have such an amazing uh, company, such an amazing company that we have right now, such an amazing leadership. So really the best advice I can give to people is just don't quit. Yeah. Really would be it. I mean, just don't quit. If you're right now, if you think about that, if you're 18 years old, 20 years old, 25 or 30 years old, I mean, what's five life? What's five years in our life? That we just have to sacrifice a little bit, just work a little bit for five years, maybe one or two or three years, and after that you never have to work again in your life. And that's really what happened to me after after I said after two years in the business, I never had to look back. So so I mean, what what's five years in our life? Because I mean, if you're 18 years old, you're gonna be 23 or or gonna be 24, 25 or 30 years old, and gonna be free for the rest of your life. So the best advice I can give, I can say this to to anyone here: is just don't quit. Because what you're saying right now is, is it's real, and it can be more real than that. That's very powerful. Okay, so this, the next question actually on their list, so we're going to see how they tackle this one. And this is actually something that I personally want to know, and I'm sure everybody my age group will want to know this. Um, you guys are highly successful. Um, you know, we've met a lot of young people. I know a lot of young people, but not all of them have your drive, perseverance, have had your success in life at such a young age. Uh, it's impressive, to say the least. So if I wanted to attract somebody like any of you into my business being a more mature, and I'm not talking about that I'm smarter than you, <laughs> I'm talking about that I'm a little older than you. If, if I wanted to attract each and every one of you into my business, what, is it any different? Is it any different attracting a young Just person? Just show me the presentation. There you go, you heard it from one of the best. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really it's, it's that it's that simple. It's not about the age or or when if you're 20 years old or 30 or 40 or 50. It's really just showing the presentation because most of the time, uh, I mean, when you're young, you're scared to talk to older people, and and maybe I don't know, maybe if you're older, you're maybe scared to present to younger people because of the of the relation that or being able to relate to the people. But at the end of the day, uh, it's going to speak for itself. So so it's that simple. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay. It's a little bit the same thing. Like I, I was, I signed for ACN, so it doesn't really matter. But maybe I think when we're a little bit more sharp, maybe like if we go like faster on the numbers and everything, this help a little bit. So that's maybe doing presentation faster. So faster, okay, I got it. <laughs> and why is that? Because you just you need to just move things yeah, faster because like, you lose interest. Yeah, just like see or? the numbers and like yeah. Okay, there we go. We have it. All right, and Alex, is there something you'd like to add to that? Okay, so if I was, let's say, an older person and I would want to attract someone like us, um, so one of the things that IACM works is basically you have to, to be able to attract someone, you have to relate to that person in the first thing. So, uh, of course, relating to the, to the person that you're presenting is, is important. And also, like, finding out and getting out, the, like, like Audrey said, like the shark in you guys, and, you know, looking for people who are, like, there's, a lot, there's tons of things. Kids, like I say, 18 year old, 19 year old, who are very money hungry. So if you if you want to attract people who are a bit younger, it, it's it, it, you gotta you guys gotta focus more on the money part because we were really focused on the money part. And, and obviously, it's not only it's you know, not only the money, but if you focus on the money part, you'll be able to attract more uh, young, like driving people. And I say, you know, like relate, like be, be more like the person that you're in, in, in front of, and then have a lot of drive, you know. Us, we do meetings like really late at night. We'll do meetings like one o'clock in the uh, one o'clock, two o'clock, no, no problem, you know. And you know, it's, I, I, actually, my mom's girl, my mom's a team coordinator, and uh, she's always telling me, "How do we? Meet, how do I sign people like you?" Like you know, and I'm telling you, you have to, you have to go out later at night. You have to do the work. You have to work really, really hard. You know? and, uh, that's why it's it's what you have to do. You know, work as hard as you can and be able to relate with the person as much as possible. Awesome. Well, I think uh, we can all agree in this room that. These gentlemen are not sitting in these chairs for a reason. They walked across the stage as regional directors top in the world for a reason. And I know I feel that I learned a lot from these gentlemen. The one thing I know about this business is that age has nothing to do with anything. 
Um, I watch people of all different age groups and from all different backgrounds, and I know I learned so much from so many different people, and I learned a lot from you today. So let's give it up for our young panel, panel this evening. Thank you so much.